first one's up. My whole organizational system just collapsed. I need to figure out how to end sentences. Oh my gosh. Hi. So uh, I'm new around these parts and I thought I'd make a kind of get to know you video. So I made a list of all of my all-time favorite books, books I read again and again, books that shaped me as a person, books that gave me so many feels, and I wanted to share that with you. So let's get crack -lacking. So After college, I had to clear out my childhood room, liquidate that down to what I could fit into a shared apartment, and then liquidate that down to what I could fit in my car, because I was road tripping it to California which meant that I ended up getting rid of about 80% of all of the things that I owned in the world and uh, about 50% of my book collection. Now that I'm more settled, I'm starting to regrow my book collection, thank God, but some of my favorites still didn't make it. Uh, for example, my first edition hardback Harry Potter collection that is very well loved, still at my parents' house because it weighs like 80 pounds. Another example, I donated most of my Tamara Pierce novels uh, because some little girl out there needs Alana and Kel and Dane as much as I did as a kid. I've been slowly replacing the books that I've lost, but it means that I'm missing certain volumes in a series, or worse, in my opinion, I have different publications of different books in the series, so that's annoying. <laughs> but hopefully that will start remedying itself. So here is a list of my all-time favorites, and please don't be surprised at how many I do not own. Drum roll, please! That was really loud. Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier, which is I think how you pronounce her name. It is a lush, mythic retelling of an Irish folktale in which a sorceress comes to the isolated fief of Seven Waters as the chief's new wife. and she proceeds to turn his six sons into swans. And it's up to Sorka, the young, fey-eyed, seventh child. So she's the first daughter, but she's the seventh child of this family to undertake a harrowing quest in order to bring her brothers home. And I love it. It is life. When I first started getting into this book, actually, um, I was about 12 or 13. And this is not YA by any means. Like, there is some not fun stuff that, uh, so definitely be aware of that going into it, um, is that it is not a, a young adult novel. But um, I was about 12 or 13 when I first read it, and uh, I have, I had this new album that now whenever I start to read this book, I have to go listen to that album, or if I start to hear that album, I have to go read this book. They are absolutely connected in my brain, it's almost Pavlovian. Next up is The Queen's Thief series by Megan Whalen Turner. None of these books are called The Queen's Thief, they're The Thief, The Queen of Atolia, The King of Atolia, Conspiracy of Kings in Order. But these books are so good, okay? The only description I really have for these books is... Jen's a little shit, and he probably deserves everything that's coming to him. <laughs> I'm such a troll, oh my god. Wizard's first rule. It's comedic and still high fantasy, which I think is a really um, amazing feat. Essentially, a young woods guide is drawn into a world where the rules are not something he understands, and the stakes are higher than he could ever imagine. He is guided by an old crazy man who turns out to be a wizard, and a young woman whose touch can kill and worse. Our protagonist has got a lot to learn, and he's got to learn it fast. This book is also very long. Uh, these are the, the, the very the thinnest pages you can come across, and it's still 836 of them. Next on my list of all-time favorites is Ender's Game and Ender's Shadow. I cannot separate these two. They are fantastic, and they have to be read together, in my opinion. Brief pause to talk about politics, because art is politics. Orson Scott Card is not a good person. Orson Scott Card holds a lot of beliefs that are not my beliefs. I have never once bought a book that he has written new. I buy them used. And I did. I don't even think I went to see the movie in theaters. This book has a movie. It's a trash fire, let's be honest. 
despite all of that, Ender's Game helped me get through adolescence with some shred of sanity left. So uh, I'm really passionate about the books. And that's what I have to say about that. Onwards! Next one is Dealing with Dragons by Patricia C. Reed. I love these books. Princess Cimmerine despises all things proper. She cajoles and tricks the court magician into teaching her magic, the court fencing master into teaching her fencing, the court chef into teaching her how to make cherries jubilee. All this until her parents find out what she's doing and kibosh those activities as being improper for a princess. So Simmerin runs away and volunteers to be the princess of the dragon Kazool. They are ridiculous, they are amazing, and they are lovely, and I'm going to read these to my children one day. <laughs> Next in the series is one that I do not own. It is called Howl's Moving Castle. I'm going to try and put it in a, some, somewhere over here. This one is harder to describe. Sophie has some innate talents that offend the Witch of the Waste, and so the witch curses her, and essentially forces her to go off and seek her fortune, despite her protestations that she is the eldest of three and therefore probably won't amount to much anyway. This book is very different from the movie, but they're both amazing. So the next things on the list is pretty much everything by Tamara Pierce. Uh, You've got the Alana series, you've got the Kel series, you've got, um, I guess I should call them by their proper titles, so you've got uh, Song of the Lioness, you've got Protector of the Small, you've got uh, Wild Magic, no that's the first, that's the first one of the series, what's, what's Dane's series called? I don't have the books with me so I can't check, um, though I mean the internet is a thing, but I'm making a video, anyway. So I've never read the Becca Cooper series. Um, Circle of Magic and The Circle Opens are so good also, uh, but the one series I was never able to let go of, <laughs> I was never able to get rid of it, was uh, Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen, the duology, which are the stories of Alana's daughter Allie as she deals with the consequences of being the trickster god's chosen one. Alright, next up is what was next up? Hey hey! Um, next up is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which I'm gonna put a image of right here because I also don't own it. Well I do, it's just in a different state. Um, I have, to, to my chagrin, I have one and two in the much later publications and then my roommate's copy <laughs> of the seventh one in the original hardback and you have no idea how much this bugs me like it bugs me so much but uh one day i will remedy this um but i love the third one because it's the introduction of ramus and sirius and it's i mean hermione granger has the time turner like that girl is invincible for nine months out of a year it's so good. I'm just, I'm not even going to summarize it because I'm operating on the belief that everyone on booktube has read Harry Potter, which might be biased, but uh, it should be true. And next is one I also don't own. I don't know how they all ended up in the middle of this, this video, but it's Stardust by Neil Gaiman. A boy goes off to seek a fallen star for his beloved, and literally nothing goes as planned. Yep, that's about it. I really love this book. It is a coming of age story in the best way possible. Read this book and then talk to me about it. It's so good. <laughs> it is an adult fairy tale. It is definitely not a YA book. It is an adult fairy tale, despite the fact that it's a coming of age story. It's got some iffy bits. So yeah, take it with great assault, but it's so good. Okay, next up is the Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis, also known as the book that ruined me. I feel like the best way to describe this book is the first line written on the inside dust cover, which says, Alex Craft knows how to kill someone. Next up is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. Yes, I looked up how to pronounce her name. Okay, here's how we're gonna do this. Blue Sergeant is the only non-psychic in a house full of psychics. 
Gansey, Ronan, Adam, and Noah are on a quest to <laughs> find a dead Welsh king. The five of them together make a pretty interesting team. And the cover art. Speaking of interesting teams though, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Libra Dugo. Oh. Okay. Kaz Brecker, aka Dirty Hands. Inej, aka The Wraith. Nina Mathe. Matthi Matthias? I'm gonna go with Matthias. Wylan and Jesper. In summary, a ragtag crew of highly specialized criminals and highly specialized non-criminals with a big score on the horizon. They're just, they're just so precious. I just, I just love them. There was a moment while I was reading this book when I wanted to be Kaz Brecker, and that moment very quickly passed, but I just love him. Like, he is a national treasure and should be protected at all costs. And last, but certainly not least, The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I guess really all you can say before you go into this book is, the circus arrives without warning and brings with it a bevy of miracles and secrets that will boggle the mind and ensnare the senses. And yes, I stole that from Severus Snape. So that is my list of all-time favorite books that I will carry in my heart forever and ever, and I will reread over and over again. Let me know if any of these babies also made your list. Tell me about the books that you loved as, as a child. Tell me the books that helped you like grow as a person and like figure out who you were and what you valued in life. Let me know if you have recommendations for me based on what you know that I love. Basically, just talk to me about books. Just, just talk to me about books. Adiento.